Ha! Ah, Transformers Energon. You absolute mess of a show, you. I mean, what could be said about Energon that hasn't already been said? Yeah, sure, the animation's dull and the dubbing's bad in a lot of places, and it's the only show to have these two abominations. But honestly, I don't think people give it enough credit. Woo! I can't wait to see the death threats after this one. The show mostly, about 98% of it, is just the Autobots trying to stop the Decepticons from stealing their Energon and rebuilding Unicron, which, it's kind of a good plot point, but it's also pretty throwaway at the same time. And then there's the other parts of the plot. This is why everyone hates the show. Yeah, see, the real reason everyone else hates the show is because the other major part of the plot revolves around Ironhide and Kicker trying to get along and be partners, and Kicker not trying to be so edgy. Now, this plot point could have worked if it wasn't for one little thing. Kicker sucks. Yeah, Kicker is... well, he's Kicker. He, there's no other way of putting it. He's just way too edgy for a lot of people, and he's the main reason people hate the show, honestly. Now, the toy line, that's a different story. You had a really diverse amount of Autobots and Decepticons, you had great gimmicks, and you had combiners. Boy, did we have combiners! Now, see, at the time of Energon's toy line release, I wasn't really into Transformers yet because I was trying to figure out a little something called speaking and trying to stand up. But recently, I've collected most of the Autobots from the show, and I recently picked up our review subject for today, which is Energon Megatron. Yep, today we're doing Energon Megatron. Strangely enough, there's actually two versions of this guy. Um, there was one, which is this one, of course, and then there's a smaller one that was released in Toys R Us in Japan with a smaller Optimus Prime that was about the size of a Deluxe, but the Megatron was about the size of a Voyager. I believe that one also saw a Galvatron repaint like this one, and it was also reused for the Botcon Shattered Glass. Now, looking at his vehicle mode, giant ship. I mean, yeah, I gotta say, this thing is really big. I mean, for a quick size comparison, I mean, here he is, and here right next to him is Siege Sideswipe. This thing is big compared to new figures nowadays. I mean, even for the line itself, I mean, it's still, still a pretty big figure overall. Now, I find that modern Megatrons usually fall into two categories, which is either one, a giant tank, or two, a weird flying thing that doesn't make any sense. And this thing kind of follows the latter. I mean, it's a little bit over the top. It's got all these guns all around it, and it's really big. But, I mean, it still looks really cool overall. I mean, it's in terms of detailing, you've got two little, or three little cannons on each side right here. Um, you've got these big uh, emerald translucent cannons up front that go down and up. And then you've got um, intakes right here, followed by engines in the back. Oh, followed by engines in the back, right there. And then you've also got um, cannons on the side, cannons right here. I guess you could call that a missile, I don't know, but there's guns everywhere. Um, you've got little intakes right up here, and then you've got four Minicon ports on top. And then you've got molded in the Decepticon logos on both sides and you've got nice landing gear that all folds up nicely so you can take off or you can land him and in terms of the color scheme I mean the color scheme works really nice here as well you've got the blue up here on the wings and you've got like the off white-ish like eggshell kind of creamish color I don't know what you'd call that but it it looks really nice followed by like the orange inside the intakes here on all sides and then in the back you got the blue and the orange on the engine so it looks like the engines are kind of ignited there which is a nice touch now there are a couple things you can do to arm this mode a little bit more 
the first thing you can do is raise up these wings like this. Pretty simple, right? And now you've got what they call in the show for all the Decepticons is hyper mode, which basically just means that there's a like a flip out missile launcher or there's just more translucent parts that appear, which in this case, once again, is the latter. Um, you've got more cannons right here. You've got some that come out the back. I mean, it 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 improves the look a little bit. It does a little kind of look like an X-wing flying in, but most of the time when you saw Megatron flying in, you'd see him already in hyper mode. Now there is another thing you can do in this mode, but it's dumb, it's stupid, and I hate it. Now what we've got here is basically his Armada tank mode as a tank drone. Um, it's got really nice detailing actually. Um, it's got these little like tears here, like damage marks here, like scr like scuffs and scrapes on the side and it's got these really big gashes in there. And then, of course it's also got this targeting scope right there. So that's really nice. And it's got this nice molded detail on the top and a mini com port also right there. And then it's also got this thing here that we're going to save for robot mode. And of course it's got the cannon, but unfortunately the cannon does not turn at all. But it does roll. I mean, it doesn't really work that well on my table, but you can still scoot it along. It's got rolling wheels on the bottom. Um, and then of course it's got this um, firing launch gimmick right here that shoots a missile and... makes this absolutely obnoxious and stupid noise and I freaking hate it. But yeah, so what you're gonna do here is these the four minicon ports that are on top, you're gonna use those and take those four holes right here and you're gonna place the tank right on top there to finish, I guess, the hyper mode. And now you've got a tank sitting on a giant gunship. Woo! Yeah, I honestly could just care less about this tank because really in the show you never really saw him use it outside of what it does in his robot mode. You never really see it rolling around on its own. I don't ever think you actually actually ever see it, but the only purpose it serves in this is just to give it stupid lights and sounds and give it a few gimmicks. But other than that, this is a pretty solid vehicle mode overall. Um, there's really not much else to say. I mean, it's overall really solid. simple transformation you get this robot mode and this is where this figure really shines. You can tell that this thing was definitely meant to be Galvatron. Just looking at the whole thing like all together I mean in the head especially you could definitely see the Galvatron in the head. The horns, the face, the angry face definitely sells the Galvatron. There's also the abs of course and then the cannons itself actually look like Galvatron's arm cannon, except for the fact that they're an emerald translucent color. But you can definitely still see the Galvatron details in there. Even the kneecaps and the feet still scream Galvatron. Which, strangely enough, this thing actually does get a repaint of Galvatron eventually in the Energon line, which in my opinion is one of the greatest 
uh, repaints of all time. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, incidentally, I actually have three of these things. I've, of course, got this one. One that's missing an arm cannon right here. And one that's missing almost everything and looks like he's been smoking meth all his life. Stop it. Get some help. But yeah, this thing definitely looks great. It looks powerful. It's big. It's bulky. It's clicky with all these ratcheted joints. I mean, it looks amazing. In terms of detailing, I mean, all the a lot of the colors are still here from vehicle mode that were here. Um, you've got new stuff like the arm joints in here. There's some orange in there, of course, and you got the abs, and then you got the new Decepticon logo, which is also molded in. And then you've got some black on the legs right there, of course, and then the intakes and the engines are still present. And, of course, his face is like a silvery blue color, and then you still got the arm cannons from robot mode. And lastly, one thing I didn't go over is on the side here, I don't know how well you can see that, zoom in a little bit it's gonna be a little bit hard to see get some light in there now you can see it there's God, come on come on there's a little decepticon logo in there it's a spark crystal for an energon star so what we can actually do is take this thing that i got off of my energon bruticus maximus combiner turn the megatron around and just slap this thing right on there and now he's got an Energon Star power-up. Yeah, it's a little bit underwhelming, but, I mean, it was one of the main plot points in the show was they were getting these power-ups from uh, Omnicons and Terracons, and they would shoot these Energon Stars onto them, and it would give them a power-up. Which, I mean, it gives them a little bit more play options, so that's pretty interesting. Now, of course, you can also fold these cannons down and, and also um, open... The wings up again and give him hyper mode once more in robot mode which it it works it's it makes him a little bit more back heavy because the wings are all the way back here but it's it still works and now we're going back to the tank again great so what we're gonna do is take the tank take these take these tabs and open them up right here and just take this little groove right here in his arm and just strap it on in. And now he's got a big old fusion cannon on his arm that completely makes him side heavy, but it works. It, it works kind of. It's not the greatest look because it's really big and bulky, but it still works. The only thing is he didn't really use this in the show that much. When he f fired a projectile, it was usually out of his shoulder cannons. But that's not actually the only thing he can do. Um, if you may remember, I did mention this little thing right here. What we're going to do is go back here. And we're going to push this right inside. And then we're going to push this button. And out comes a sword. And then we're just going to open this up again. And then put this right back on the other way. And now he's got a sword. There we go. Let me get him all situated here. If he'll stand. And there, now you have complete hyper mode. Which, it looks good. This is way more accurate to the show than the Fusion Cannon look. Because he actually did use the sword quite a bit. The only thing I wish that they would have done is try to some capacity to, um, oops. It's a little bit top heavy. I'm going to go ahead and fold these wings up so he can stand a little better. So, I wish that the only thing he could have, they could have done better is maybe put the handle on this sword so he can hold it right here because initially before the show got a little bit farther in he had another sword that kind of looked like this that had a handle and it wasn't attached to this stupid tank but at one point in the show all the Autobots got copies of his sword so he got pissed off and decided that he deserved a better sword. 
and he threw it in the ground inside Unicron, and it basically made him this with the tank attached to it. Which I might- it was not this big ever in the show. It was like the size of his forearm. In terms of articulation, his head goes all the way around, 360, and then his arms go all the way around as well if you fold this cannon down and bring the wing all the way back. You can get a complete range of movement there, and then it goes out at the shoulder, and you've got elbows as well. And then of course the uh, arm cannons can go backwards and forwards, both ways. And then you've got outward movement at the hip, and then you've got a kick frontwards, and then a little bit backwards, but not much. And then you've got a good ratcheted knee joint. Almost all of his joints are ratcheted. I think every single one of them actually are ratcheted. And then you've got this, but I don't think you'll ever really use that. The same goes with the fist. Fist pushes in, I don't think you'll use it. Overall, it's a bulky toy. I mean, it's really, it's well articulated for how like bulky it is. It's not amazing, but it's honestly really good for its time. Now let's do some size comparisons. Here he is next to Energon Optimus Prime, Energon Scorponaut, his future counterpart Cybertron Megatron, and a more modern figure in Siege Sides. I gotta say, seeing this figure with the Scorponok and the Optimus Prime really is awesome. Especially with the roles that these two characters specifically play against Megatron in the show. It's a really fun display piece to have with your Energon Optimus and your Scorponok. And, of course, I couldn't resist. I had to have Hotshot under his foot, considering what he does to Hotshot in one of the episodes. It really is great to have this now as a display option. I gotta say, overall, this figure is really fantastic. There's nothing wrong with it, aside from the tank. It's absolutely fantastic. The detailing's awesome. The head sculpt is great. The vehicle mode is awesome. Both modes are amazing. I couldn't recommend it anymore, especially if you're a Unicron Trilogy fan. Because I know there are some of you out there. I've seen you before. I mean, I'm specifically one of them. I know... Somebody else besides me is going to like this figure. And you can find him almost completely complete, maybe missing a missile or something, for about $70. And I think that's honestly worth it for how big this figure is and everything that it can do. So yeah, I would highly recommend this to just about anybody. But yeah, this has been the Treebot. I'll see you guys next time.